This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, Indie Mayhem Show, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, where we talk with people in and around the indie wrestling, pro wrestling industry. Myself, a video producer here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe to the show on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio for the podcasty version and video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just, let's search for that Indie Mayhem Show. You'll find a lot of stuff going on and some hundred of, uh, interviews and people that we've talked to over the years. Uh, and please uh, support the show. Communicate with the show. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. As well as our Patreon page, patreon.com slash wrestling man show. Thank you so much for the people that have been contributing to the show for a good long time. And and uh and it really kind of showing that that people uh do care that we're doing this thing here and, and uh, helping us grow. And you don't have to support the show that way. It's share the show if you enjoy a conversation we've had, you know, especially the recent weeks talking to people working with Powerbomb TV and Lucha Underground, uh and and everybody from the past and and future. And I think we've had people on the show that have been or are currently on every major promotion and it's a fantastic thing to 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 you know have have in our catalog so this week we're going to talk to i'm going to call him a pittsburgh wrestling legend he is he's been around for uh, he's shaking his head he's shaking his head um every time i go to any show i always have to look in the back and see if jake garrett is there and i'm looking in the back of the studio here and jake garrett is here ladies Hi, and everybody. gentlemen i spelled his twitter right this time <laughs> and everything uh jake garrett is a booker with uh, black diamond wrestling of course uh sometimes these days are you semi-retired i guess officially or you... I, okay i don't use the term retired because wrestling you, yeah well also like you retire from what you do for a living, mm-hmm. and I don't think I've made my wrestling school tuition back from wrestling. <laughs> so, you know, I'm I'm not going to be a retired wrestler. I'm going to be a retired whatever it is I do for my real job mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the time comes. Uh, but I I use a term. I'm no longer an active professional wrestler. That's fair. That's fair. That's awesome. So, of course, working with Black Diamond Wrestling and the uh, West Virginia Panhandle uh, roundabouts. We'll get into that, of course, here in a little bit. Uh, so the first question, kind of break the ice question that, that we like to throw out here on the show is, like, what is kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling? And maybe the thing that hooked you. Okay. Um, I just I was just talking about this on Facebook with Kato. Um, Kato. Sorry, I have to. Um, when In 1979... We first got cable. I'm old. I mean, 1979. That's good. I got my cable in 1996. <laughs> so you, you beat me on that one. Um, and, you know, we went from having uh, PBS, ABC, CBS, mm-hmm. NBC, right, to uh, WT, we, got, we got WTOV, we got WTRF, and we got Channel 5, USA Network, Channel 12, WTBS. Six o'clock on a Saturday, you know, sometime around there, flipping through. Oh, what's this? Georgia Championship Wrestling. Um, can't can't say the first thing I saw. Like I can't pinpoint, but I remember Tommy Rich because he was cool and he, uh, you know, he was the every every guy hero, and Buzz Sawyer, who was the villain, and he was beating him up every week for eighteen months. So for me, it's, I can, I can, I can't pinpoint a day or a match, but the build that eventually led to last battle for Atlanta, uh, Tommy Rich, Buzz Sawyer, that's what got me into pro wrestling, Georgia championship wrestling. Mm -hmm. And that's something like that's you know, we we talked about, I I think on gold perhaps or off air about last battle and how, how like that footage had been lost for, for a while and and cropped up the last couple of years. Um, like, that wasn't like there was no pay per view. Like no, you, so you saw well, the bill. All yeah, yeah. But the only way the only way you got to see the blow off was you went to the Omni in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, being a seven-year-old kid in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I probably wasn't going to get to the Omni. So no, no, no. I don't even remember hearing like them talking on TV about you know if Tommy Rich had won. He, he yeah. did, but yeah, like I don't remember. After that, okay, we're done with that, and let's move on to wow. the next thing for Tommy Rich and the next thing for Buzz Sawyer. That's amazing, and, and this is the time where like these were getting expanded because of cable. Yeah. So, so that you know, mostly people would have seen that in Georgia, and now, and not that I couldn't have gone to a house show because they ran Wheeling, they ran Columbus, they mm. ran Zanesville, like they Ohio and West Virginia was part of their territory, where Pennsylvania was uh, Capital Wrestling WWF WWWF WWF at the time. Mm-hmm. So you know, they weren't going to come to Pittsburgh and do a show, not in not in the seventies or even the early eighties. The earliest. The NWA came here would have been, I think, 84 or 85, where they ran a big event at uh, Three River Stadium that had a monsoon breakout during uh, like the second half of the show. Really? Yeah. That, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. I, had- I only know about that from like reading results. And uh, my friend Andy Stoll, he went to the event. He's a, he's a, he's a year or two older than me, so he, he goes mm. back even farther than I do. And he told me about like it was... Um, Main event was Magnum and Flair, and they're wow. wrestling in a rainstorm. Wow! Yeah, in Three Rivers, in Three Rivers Stadium. Yeah, that that would have been in and front probably... of like two thousand people. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> but but their TV wasn't as strong in the area. It wasn't no, you know no. WWE? They WWF at the time. They had the uh, Civic Arena, and they could they could sell it out because they'd say Bruno's going to be there. And right. Everyone wants to go see Bruno. Right, right, and maybe people don't. don't haven't heard as much of Ric Flair up in this area yeah. because of that. Because, I mean, how many people probably had cable in the area? Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we were in tough times in the 70s. <laughs> so I don't think there was a lot of money, extra money for cable, yeah. this new fa- fangled thing. So, um, but uh, and, as, as we're hearing Wheels talking about his DSL problems in the chat room. <laughs> uh, so, but th- that's awesome. I, I, I didn't I didn't realize that, that those those kind of things. And even when you see like, like those, uh, we were talking about AWA earlier. Um, and, and you see those baseball stadium yeah. shows and, and nobody filled the baseball stadiums. You know? Well, you got to think about, well, it depends on when and where. Right. Because WWE, WWF would fill Shea Stadium. True. And, and, uh, the CN center, was it for the big event in like 86 ish? Uh, whatever, whatever baseball stadium they did for that. It was like Hogan and Norndorf. I, I just remember. Mm. That it's also yeah. on the WWE network. Yeah. Like, you know, you every once in a while they'll make it work, but I mean like mm-hmm. console P, uh, PPG paints, civic arena, whatever, what, you know, the, the, the building in Pittsburgh that seats 20,000, mm-hmm. like anything about well, 20,000 people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. What does Heinz field hold? 60. Big difference. You're talking three times Absolutely. the crowd you're attempting to to draw to that to that building. Baseball stadium is what probably forty, tw- yeah. maybe back then twenty thousand. Yeah. So but it's still well, three rivers, three rivers did more than twenty thousand. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, you're talking like even even if you get ten thousand people, it's going to look empty. I, 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 in my mind, I'm rolling back the Forbes Field because I, we had a discussion about we were trying to find results, uh, pictures, anything from the Forbes Field wrestling show that we keep hearing about. Uh, talk to Hank Hudson. I think Hank Hudson is in this in the discussions for that. So yeah, I mean, but. like uh, he uh, he I, I'm in he's in a he has a, there's a Facebook group, um, st- Studio Wrestling, right, group. right, and uh, he's always posting. Yeah, I, I love between him and Lord Zoltan. Like there's these great old flyers from like you know Pittsburgh, you know, always popping up in there, and I just I just stops me in my Facebook feed for for like five minutes. Yeah, you sit there, you read the results and how like Hank has like detailed results yeah. of what went yeah. on, and like, just so much about about the matches. I I asked Hank about a year ago about um, it was the first indie match indie show I ever went to is the Washington County Fair because they had just done a big battle royal here in Pittsburgh and this was like the next night. Mm-hmm. And Bobo Brazil was uh, on the card in Pittsburgh, and he was also on the card at the fair. And I thought, well, we're probably going to see a lot of the same guys. Turns out, no, it's an indie show. Uh, I saw Al Snow. He wasn't using the name Al Snow at the time. Mm-hmm. He was part of a tag team um, that were like, you know, 80s rockers, but they were the heels. Um, and I asked, so I asked Hank, if he, like, I asked Zoltan about, hey, do you know anything about this show? Were you on this show? And he's like, no. And then I asked Hank about it, and um, you know, Hank 
yeah, yeah, here's the results. I'm like, oh, that's odd. Cause like, it's just like, who did I see? Cause I remember seeing Bobo Brazil, but I remember the tag match, mm-hmm. but I don't remember the guys in it. And now I know all oh, one of them was Al Snow. So that's, you know, to me, that's kind of cool. And they were a group of guys out of Detroit who took their show on, you know, on a loop of the, in the summer. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense that Bobo was there being a Detroit guy. So, so, so you had to see, like, you know, you, you got to experience Pittsburgh wrestling through uh, mostly the eighties, right? Pittsburgh wrestling. Well, it, it just shows oh, pro around wrestling. Shows, pro wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So I went to, I don't know if it was his first title defense, but I went to an early Hogan title defense, mm-hmm. uh, at the arena. It was the first WWF show, first pro wrestling show I went to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I got to see a guy who would later become my favorite wrestler of all time. Uh, Eddie Gilbert was on the undercard. It was him and Paul Orndorff. And I can't remember who Orndorff was in a program with on TV at the time, but he, uh, Eddie Gilbert was in a program with, um, mass superstar because Eddie Gilbert was Bob Backlund's protege. And he had just been in a car accident. Superstar's finisher was a spinning neck breaker. And so he kept going after Eddie's neck and it it was, it was to, it was to build to what originally was going to be the title change of Bob Backlund to mass superstar. But then the whole Iran thing is like, Ooh, you know, we can probably do more with Sheik and then Sheik to Hogan. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this was, this was just after Hogan's Hogan won the belt. And so it was like one of his early title defenses. So that was pretty cool. Now, um, I can't, February or March of 83 or 84. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, so what, how did you go from, you know, obviously you got into wrestling early. Uh, how did you go from that to, I want to get into the ring? Um, I like always a, a super fan, like mm-hmm. always just so like wrestling was everything and, mm-hmm. People I talked to in high school were, uh, or middle, junior high and high school were other people who were into wrestling. So it's always been, uh, no matter what, I just, I want to be a wrestler. I want, but I mean, how, you know, how, how do you get into wrestling? Because I'm not six and a half feet tall. I'm not Jack to the gills. Mm-hmm. They're not going to come looking for me. In those days, there weren't a lot of options for smaller guys. Um, Like, especially... Uh, Oh, Eddie Gilbert. I mean, yeah, he was yeah. smaller, but he had an in because his dad, his his dad was a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Brian Hildebrandt, mm-hmm. he was a smaller guy, and man, he got a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You know, and he he, not speaking from personal experience because I met the guy once, but you know, from reading about like in Mick Foley's book and and uh, others, you, you hear about Brian Hildebrandt, and he was a guy who loved wrestling, and he was going to do whatever role came up for him because of how bad he wanted to work in wrestling, be it a manager, a cruiserweight wrestler, a referee, whatever it was, that was for him. Um, and so I'm of the, you know, I, I wanted to be a wrestler over anything else. And looking back, I should have been more open. Like I, I probably should have been a referee. One, I'd be a lot healthier. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, cause I should have been like, just, take take your opportunity and run with it because you're getting to work in, in a business that you want to work in that mm-hmm. you you know that, that you love and that would have like it would have been better for me but you know i'm pig-headed and i wanted to wanted to wrestle but i also look at it like this everyone who gets into wrestling wants to be randy savage right no one wants to be randy barber who's randy barber he was one of the jobbers on tbs but you know something if i'm a jobber well i'm doing what i love i'm wrestling and everyone needs to be put over. So I'll be the guy who puts everyone over. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I just I just want to be in the ring. It's still a job in wrestling. Yeah. You know. Well, not it, it, now everyone is some like on 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 the bigger level everyone is somebody. And that's good mm-hmm. because that makes them more marketable and it makes them able to make more money. But mm-hmm. I was hoping I was hoping like the territories we didn't know the territories were going to dry up. Right. And then they did. And it's not as bad for me as it was for the guys who were actually making their money that way. Uh, but I was, you know, I was, I wish, I wish I could have been a guy who, yeah, you know, every, you know, every Tuesday I'm at the studio and work three or four matches over the night and get paid and 
mm-hmm. you know, do my thing and, and work that way. And just unfortunately that, that wasn't there, but I'd have been, you know, like, for me, I'd have been fine being that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, where was I going? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the progress of the kind of where you were going, like your wrestling. So so how did you know? Again, this is this is an era where there weren't internet. You know, there wasn't internet. There was. How do you discover a wrestling school in those days? Okay, for me, it well, I didn't like. I and, didn't. And, and, and when you were discovering that, what, what what era were we in right there? Um, attitude. Attitude era. Yeah, okay. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, you know, for me, it was. Um, I was watching ECW. Mm-hmm. So like I will put wrestling on TV. I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. Right. And and this isn't I don't I don't want to say because I loved ECW. ECW reminded me of the wrestling I was watching when I was younger, like the NW. Just that kind of raw yeah feel to it. Um, and fortunately, their entire show is an infomercial. So when it comes time for the commercial breaks, it's upcoming events, it's merch, it's the ECW, it's Taz's dojo. Right. So I was all set. I'm going to move to New York and I'm going to go to, you know, go to the school house of hardcore. And then I see they're going to open one here in Pittsburgh. Well, you know, I don't have to move to New York if I go to the one in Pittsburgh. And this was Shane Douglas's, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, they're opening the school here and I call that number instead. And, uh, get set up with, you know, find out what, what it's going to cost and all that. And got very, you know, it says three grand. I'm like, right before this came up, I was getting ready. I was going to go to the PWX school because they had their TV show. And I contacted, I actually looked up their number and contacted them. Hey, do you guys have a school? Right. Cause like, I want to get into wrestling. So, and I went and did their tryout and that it's pretty rough. You know, it was pretty rough. Uh, for a fat lump of shit like myself, um, they all, I almost threw up. I didn't, but it came very, very close. Um, and and it's not a, you know not a knock on them, but then the opportunity to the, uh, go to the ECW school came up, and a buddy of mine who was running a business in the South Hill said, "If you want to do this for real, I'll cover your tuition. The only deal is you can't quit." Okay, yeah, I'm in. Um, and you, and you had at this point, you know, with the with the tryout, kind of had a glimpse of, of which, yeah. what you were in. What for. um, yeah. So like like I, I imagine they 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 kind of ran you a bit. They they did you two mile run. Um, we didn't learn. We didn't really learn how to bump yet because no. you you don't you don't give that away in the tryout. No, but um, we had to do a bunch of drills in the ring, mm-hmm. uh, step up stuff like that, and just we're gonna push you, push you, push you, push you, push you are you going to come back? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so like I said, I knew what I was, was, was in for. And then, um, when you know, started with the ECW school and the warm, <laughs> the warm up, like warming up there was a lot, like was nowhere near as hard. And it's just, it's just how they, how they had it set up, you mm-hmm. know? Um, um di- differences, I'm driving a lot farther up to, you know, up to New Brighton, PA, as mm-hmm. opposed to uh, over to McKeesport. But, you know, whatever it takes, you know, um, there were days that they in the winter they would cancel class and I didn't find out until after I got up there. <laughs> and that's fine, you know. I'm gonna. I'm showing up. There were again pre-internet, pre-text message. Yeah, you know, there was there wasn't communication. Yeah, uh, there would be other days that I would. Um, I get out of. I used to work at a bar as a bouncer, and my friend who had a bar, right? So, um, I would you know work the door, get out at two, have to be there at five. Why well, go home and sleep when I have to be I have to be up early so I can make this drive? So I just drive up to the school, sleep in my truck in front of the school. Um, when one of the, one, one of the other guys would show up, they'd wake me up, go and work out for six, eight hours, mm-hmm. you know, um, see the, with, at the school, me, uh, Jimmy Vegas is one of the guys in my class. Mm-hmm. The ver- I think, I think we had a, a conversation. I was going to wonder if he was in there cause we had a conversation with him and I think, uh, he, 
I don't know if Shane Douglas owes him money or something. I, I forgot what we got into on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, 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 he was owed his spot on ECW TV because that was part of it. Yeah, because right? like part of, part of your deal with your contract mm-hmm. was uh, you are guaranteed one TV match. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that that's that's a big deal. Oh yeah, you know because I mean, not as accessible as it is today with YouTube. Right. Like that's, I mean, why you have three opportunities to get on TV and they're all three letter companies on TV. ECW was one of them. Yeah. So, and, and that's because the, the other two companies had their eyes on it. Mm -hmm. So even if, even if, you know, you, you were getting looked at by ECW, but also WCW, WWE at the time. So I mean, that's, that's good for you. You, you want that match. Mm -hmm. Um, that might still be enforceable, but I don't want that match. <laughs> Never got it. Don't care. <laughs> Man, you could have been. You could have been the ECW zombie. If you enforced it. Later. I could have been. <laughs> I could have been Tim Orson. There you go. Uh, no, you know, at 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 this point, not yeah. worried about it. No, no, obviously. Um, that a lot of that stems with the way the the way things shut down at the school. Mm. Um, because we received this letter about we, you know, we're disrespectful and we weren't showing up. No, we were showing up. You couldn't be there because your WCW contract precluded you from being there. You had to be on the road for them. Mm-hmm. It wasn't our fault. You could have got, you could have got, uh, Cody to take over. You could have got Dom to show up because Dom did our training in the early days and then you took over. Uh, Dominic Danucci. Danucci yeah. Yeah. Um, Cody Michaels, and, and, and we're and we're talking about, and you're you're talking, we're talking about Shane Douglas was running the school, yeah, and he had what got hired by WCW, so that yeah. that kind of yeah, he had left ECW and yeah. and uh, signed a contract with WCW, mm-hmm. and good for you, make your money, that's what it's about, absolutely. But you know, when when the school closed down, that was that was what it was. It mm-hmm. was he, you know, he couldn't be there, and we received these shitty letters that it was on us. Welcome to pro wrestling, but you know. We also, for me, it had been around a, about a year at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were some guys who had come through the school who had, who were already working, like some guys were with PWX and they were, you know, working out there to uh, increase their, uh, increase the guys that were on them. Uh, some guys who were with uh, USCW, uh, United States Championship Wrestling was run by Sal Conte. Um and you know, some of these guys I'm still friends with. Uh, one of the one of the USCW guys, uh, Jerry Harper, worked on the name QB Blitz. One of my best friends. Um, he's a guy who just did Cougar Mountain Mayhem for and he helped his son with that show. Um, and uh, shit, I hate when I lose track of thought. <laughs> um, so like you know, these guys came through, and um, the uh, some of the USCW guys had left USCW and started their own deal. And they were like, hey, you know, uh, you want to work with us? I'm like, well, I can't yet. I can't until they say I can. And which is the right thing to do. You know, mm-hmm. if you're going, if, if you're, uh, if you're in training, you're, you're a uh, young uh, wrestling trainee right now. Don't, do not go, go, don't undercut your trainer and start working shows until your trainer says it's okay. Because respect is big in wrestling and that will make you people will one you won't know 100 percent what you're doing yet and two you're going to make you're going to make yourself look bad you're going to make the people who train you look bad and you say oh i was going i was trained by bob maluga luga and all oh, that's what bob maluga luga is teaching you um which could be a real name in wrestling it could be <laughs> um so uh like i said the the these guys have started up uh, come w, called WPWA, which eventually became KSWA, because uh, some some of the same guys were working the shows, and uh, I, uh, you know, uh, worked out, went went out and did a couple of shows with them, and then um, this would have been, this would have been in '99, uh, September September '99 was the first match, and then I was with them through the summer of uh, 2000. They shut down operations, you know, because buildings are expensive. Mm-hmm. License, uh, licensing, everything it takes to run shows in in Pennsylvania, it, unless you have a lot of capital. It's it's uh, if you're counting on the draw to cover all the uh, costs, 
you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yeah. Um, from there, I uh, I got back in touch with PWX, and uh, just for me, it was a matter of I just want to go. I want to get better. I want to be a better wrestler. Uh, so I wanted to work out with them, and then they start putting me on shows, and then then 2001 happened, and 2001. Uh, P- through the end of 2000 into 2000 or early 2001 PWX was running at a place called uh, Turner's Hall in McKeesport uh, it's a bar slash gym slash bowling alley it's an awesome place like if, if you have if, if 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 you have a building like this if, if you're a Turner's Hall and you have this going on you you are you're an awesome place like it's just it's cool that you can do all that there uh, and they'd been renting it, and um, they lost the building over over cost. And I'm not gonna okay. I'll, I'm not gonna go into details on it because it's not my place. Hmm. Um, but so they temporarily have to while that while while PWX is looking for a new building, they shut down operations. Um, Bubba the Bulldog. From Bubba from 100.7 and Bubba's Gourmet Burgers. <laughs> Free plug. Mm-hmm. Eat there if you haven't because it's it's delicious. It's amazing. The stuff is incredible there. The biggest burger I've ever seen. <laughs> what the hell? Um, he uh he gets this he finds a building in McKees Rocks called the Emerald Room. So do, you know, PWX starts running there again. At the same time, he's working on a, a deal for TV. Um. It, and like everything's on paper, it, it's going to happen. Um, it's going to be on a satellite channel called the Men's Network, and this is how IWC starts because Jim Miller, who runs PWX, they don't want the name PWX. Jim's Jim doesn't want to give up PWX. Mm-hmm. Rightfully so, it's his creation. Why would he? Mm-hmm. Um. So they have to come up with a new name, and that's where IWC International Wrestling Cartel comes from. Yeah, because I, I think we we've had um, we've had Bubba on pre Indie Mayhem yeah. show and Wrestling Mayhem show, and he, he talks about the yeah. story behind this, and and I think that's why it's such a different name. Too. Yeah, like they went with that cartel thing because I think they were they I think they had something in mind around that name that they were going to do with the show, possibly. Yeah, and it just kind of became a name of a promotion after that. Yeah. So when when the TV thing fell, so. Um, when when the te- when when this deal becomes concrete, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. There's a split with PWX, and mm-hmm. it's us or them. Um, now me, I'm like, well, okay, I at this time, like the guys who I'm working out with are Shirley Doe, Super Hentai, Devil Budokan, Chris Hero when he's in town, um, Orion, and if you missed out on Orion, you missed out on a stellar talent who. Would have been signed at one point, mm-hmm. but his heart went elsewhere. Good for him. He's, you know, he retired, uh, young, early, healthy, got married, um, to w- effectively race full time instead of wrestle, uh, on, you know, local dirt track racing, but, you know, follow, follow your passion. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you yeah. know, these, these are the guys I'm working out with and they're all going to IWC. Now, a lot of guys, everyone, everyone wanted to jump to IWC except for a couple of guys. I'm like, well, if I stay at PWX, I can't work out with the guys I want to work out with. Am I going to get better? You know, and that's how I'm looking at it. Like, so mm-hmm. I have to try and get on these IWC cards and at, um, the shows in, in McKee's rocks, the Emerald room, I can get on those, but like I'm having trouble getting, getting on the big cars that Norm Connors is running at the Monroeville sports center. Um, so the, while this is coming up, well, I'm also talking to other promoters. So like, um, I'm working, I, I start working for MCW run by Jeff Traxler in, uh, Elyria, Ohio. And they're running, in addition to their big monthly shows, they put on a show every Friday at their school. Bring fans in. They're not not super huge, you know. If you get 40, 50 people at these Friday events, that's a good draw. But I'm wrestling in front of a live crowd. 
So I'm getting to really practice my trade as opposed to just wrestling in an empty warehouse, mm -hmm. right? And and in a practice ring. Uh, so I'm working. I'm working every week uh, for MCW, and they became like not only like not only because they gave me work, but like it was just a good atmosphere. And my of everywhere I've worked, that's my favorite place. Um, I go to their show. If you live in Northeast Ohio and you want to wrestle, go to their school because their school is turning out some really good talent right now. Um, but you know, so every, every Friday I'm up there and one Saturday a month, I'm going up for their bigger, for their big events at, uh, at St. John's church, which they were out of for a while, but recently got back to, um, and trying to, and then still trying to get picked up here in Pittsburgh work, you know, do the IWC shows. And then Norm started using me as a manager, and I'm like, I hated it, absolutely hated that role. But I'm not going to say no to it because it gets me on the card, it gets me on the show. So this was kind of your first, like, kind of accepting that, take the roles as they as they yeah. Come. Because if I say no to this opportunity, mm -hmm. there may not be another one. Mm -hmm. So if I say yes to this opportunity, well, that opens the door to something else, to something that. I would rather, you know, something I would like more. And there were a few matches here and there. Like I said, I got to be in, uh, we did a six man, uh, devil's advocates, me, devil Budokan, Glenn Spector against sexual harassment, uh, which at the time was JT Rogers and Eric ecstasy versus, Sa and Sabu was their partner. So like <laughs> you bring Sabu in to counter me. That's, that's awesome. Like, yeah. So that's like, that's like, for me, that's like my WrestleMania moment. Like one of, one of my favorite wrestlers to watch, I, you know, is, I'm, I'm against him. This is, this is awesome for me. Um, and also around, let's see, it's what, 2017, we're hitting the 14th anniversary. So around 2003, also one of the other companies I'm working for, and this goes back to the early 2000s, PWX, the guys I, I, some of the guys I met through PWX, a guy who I got really close with worked on the name Nikita Alanoff. He worked for uh, Rick Barncord, Rick Diamond, when he ran his first company, the WIWF, World Independent Wrestling Federation. Not exactly a world traveled company, but the, you know, the Northern Panhandle. So I've, you know, I was working with Rick since the early 2000s. Uh, he sold his ring to uh, a guy named Aaron Lester, shut down. Got another ring, started up again. Uh, started uh, what he called Nail City Wrestling. They ran like one event. I was like, no, I don't want to do this. And then I feel like I've heard of that. What? It's so weird. I, I feel like I've heard that promotion. You might have heard of it from uh, you might have heard of it from Justin Idol. Probably, because yeah. Just our first it. event was cross promoted with In Your Face Wrestling, which Justin Idol was working for at the time. Uh, in this is up in Weirton. Mm -hmm. Um. And shortly after that would have been, I guess, I want to say 2003. I think that's right. Uh, it was the first Black Diamond event in June of 2003 at the um, Holiday Inn in uh, Elm Grove, Tridelphia, West Virginia. Um, I was on that show. I wrestled uh, QB Blitz. We keep talking about doing this every year. Um at the anniversary show, we, we do our match and we brawled out. Like we started brawling all through the building, like not like through the room and then out the door. And then we were brawling. We were going to brawl around and then back through, um, main events of battle Royal to crown the first champion. And I'm out early. And then he comes out a little bit later. And once we, once we're both in the ring, boom, we're at it again. Boom, boom, boom. We brawl to the back. And we talk about every year at the anniversary show, like right before intermission, like right as the match before intermission ends. And I can make this happen because I'm the booker. Um, we, whatever building we're in, boom, we break through the door, brawling, boom, 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 through, out the other side and done. And we just, we joke, we should do it because it'd be, for us, it would be funny. It wouldn't mean anything to the fans because they, <laughs> you know, people who were going to the shows in 2003 probably aren't still going to them now. Right. Um, at that time, Darren Smythe was booking Black Diamond Wrestling because, like, the company was basically Rick put the company together to give guys like Darren and Dash Bennett 
a place to work in the in, in their home area um, while they were also starting to work like PWX. And um, a few years later, Darren moved to uh, after he got before before he got married, but he moved to Florida with the woman who would become his wife. Uh, you know, just for better opportunities. That's where her family's from. And, uh, so the booking job got passed to, uh, one of my best friends, probably my best friend in the world, um, Devin Devine. And he took, had the job for a couple of years and then he took a job as a uh, cop in Was- around Washington, D.C. So he moved out of the area. Kind of hard to do the job when you're, mm-hmm. you know, 500 miles away. So I'm, it's the only guys, the only guys left from the early days in are me and Dash Bennett. And I'm the guy least likely to put the belt on myself. So I got the job. That's how I look at it. You know, um, I see other talent that could be better utilized in the top roles. Mm -hmm. So why put it on myself and choke it out when there are other people who can be there? Um, and, uh, so that would see they, Darren booked for three years, um, three, he booked for three or four years, Devin booked for a year and a half or two years. And then I got the job, you know, see, that would be about five years in we're on 14 so 11 years ago wow maybe 10 years ago yeah i started that's that a long to be in the same position the way i change it up is you know bring guys in let them you know run and when it's time for a change okay i need new people you know so 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 basically you, you kind of dedicate to having a pretty good turnover like we were just we were just yeah. talking about like how some of the promotions I, at the end of wrestling ma'am show this week about how you know some of the promotions are really good about you know bringing in different people and having that turnover and that churn right and you kind of need to at that level yeah um well anywhere because i mean if it's if it's the same 20 people for 10 years how do you how do you keep that fresh mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. whereas whereas two years down the road it's five new guys and five guys are gone. And, and this is like, you know, you know, we, we talk about like some promotions, like, I mean, we just talk about super indie, right. Where it's like, well, that's all guys that are yeah on a path. Let's there, say, right. There were, uh, um, on, on super indie this year, mm-hmm. there were six people who were there every show on, on that card. Mm-hmm. Only one of them was in the tournament. Yeah. You know, yeah. The rest, you know, there was there was a tag match, a uh, representative, you know, yeah. tag and women's and, match, and, and the women's match, yeah, you know, um, and then the what what's going on around the heavyweight title, yeah. So so you know, for most independent promotions, it's whatever that that kind of local crop of talent mm-hmm. is, and there isn't that turnover, yeah. Kind of naturally, like you see, you know, versus you know, IWC does have like some of that talent that's been there for ten years, yeah. right? But even they get cycled in and out. Yeah, and and like I I look at it like um, the uh, random wrestler, whoever it is, mm-hmm. has a shelf life. If they're really lucky in a, coming to a new area, eighteen months. Mm-hmm. You spend six months building them. You have six or seven months of them at their peak, and then. The, after you know, and you want to you want to put you you want to get behind these guys and slowly build them up to the top. So there's a one or two month run with them at the you know at the top of the card, and then after that you use you build up the next couple of guys with them on their way out, and you want to keep it. You want to do your best to keep it fresh that way. Mm-hmm. Um, like you, if you if if it's the same people all the time, eventually you're going to turn. You're going to have to find a new fan base in that area and that can be hard mm-hmm. you know because you know how many how many different groups of how many different large groups of wrestling fans are there for you to make it not even profitable but sustainable because i mean that's that's the key you want you want the shows to be self-sustaining you want them to make enough money to uh, so the next one can happen mm-hmm 
well, well, maybe not the most profitable of businesses, it's still a business. Yeah. So, and, and anybody that's bleeding money is uh, not going to keep doing it. Yeah. Like, you're, yeah. You're going to look and, you know, it's like, oh, wow. I, you know, I had 10,000 when I started and now I have 8,000. <laughs> not exactly working yeah. out well. Yes. So, um, so you've been, geez, booking for a long, long time. Um, has there been, you know, uh, through like, like I know yours is a promotion that I've seen, um, some people that, you know, maybe aren't getting a lot of opportunities up here around some of the promotions, uh, go and kind of thrive a little bit, uh, from what, from what I've seen. That's kind of like, like, that's what I want to happen. Like mm-hmm. I got guys who, and not everyone can be at the top of the card at PWX or no, IWC no. or RW, you know, so I was like, okay, well, let's, I'm going to give you an opportunity, you know, can, here's the ball. Can you, can you run with it? Like interesting stuff. Like I see like Corey, Corey Futuristic doing interesting things down there. Uh, one time I saw a, a, uh, uh, YouTube of a, uh, uh, chest flexor and a dog collar match, I believe with David that- Amir. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Um, which was like, you know, fantastic to see. Cause that's not even that kind of match doesn't even happen in this area. Yeah. Let alone, you know, and of course you guys are in a very rural, I guess, area where that is, you know, a kind of match that, 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 that gets over that, you know, kind of more Southern, uh, yeah. Feeling area. Yeah. Um, I, we, I mentioned, uh, on, uh, uh, wrestling mayhem about the, uh, the not Lego museum. Yes. We uh we did an event there a few years ago, and uh, Dash Bennett Dash Bennett used to love needling me with questions like, "Hey, can we do a Punjabi prison, man? Yeah, you bring the set, and we'll do Punjabi <laughs> prison. Oh, well, you have to provide it. Well, we don't have one, so we're where, at the where is the rent a Punjabi prison exactly. uh, site out there? Well, okay, Rick would build one if he could get the materials. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of bamboo. He yeah, well, he we have a a blue a blue wooden cage that looks like the old steel blue oh, cage. Jeez, that's amazing. Because Rick had the had the materials and he built one. Uh so would he build the Punjabi prison if he had the time and the materials? He would. Oh, jeez. Um. So we're at the not Lego museum, and Dash says, "Hey, can we do a Lego death match?" I'm like, "Yeah, start building stuff." Because, like, they have a room where you can, a bunch of loose Legos, have fun. So they're building, they built a table and a bunch of other stuff out of Lego. And they go out and, and Dash and, and Flexer do this Lego death match. It's on YouTube. That's amazing. Yeah. I think, um, I've seen, I think I've seen that called a playtime is over match in some promotions. That's <laughs> uh, the first time I saw a gathering. They pulled out, like, Legos one time. And it, it just looked like the most brutal thing. Because uh, who wants to step on you? Ever, have you ever stepped on a Lego? Barefoot? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And just, like, yeah, you let, pray let, for death. And then let's throw your entire body on, on yeah. a stack of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of sharp edges. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm trying to remember what your question was so I can get back to it. Um, <laughs> oh, about, yeah, like, Southern, like, Southern style. Southern style yeah. and giving people yeah. opportunities. Um, um, let's see. You remember the Nexus? You fondly you remember remember how that all started right they come out and they destroy the place they yeah. try to kill the ring announcer yeah yeah um do you know we did that same angle 24 hours before them <laughs> there's no lie really yeah um uh vinnie stone who he he was he was going to west liberty university west liberty university had a pro wrestling club Guys who got together to watch paper. You know, it was an official club recognized by the school, and, and they watch Raw. They watch all the wrestling, right? We, we, we started a juggalo club in my art school. So okay. That, that, I'm not, right. it's not, uh, that doesn't surprise me. I wish I would have started one of those. So, <laughs> And uh, so there, there, he, starts, you know, he finds out about this. Since he's a wrestler, mm-hmm. he's talking to these guys, and they start working out, and he's training these guys. They have two pieces of, uh, of gymnastic mat to work out on. All right. So, I mean, like they're taking hard bumps. They don't have, the, but they're learning, they're learning the important stuff. They're learning chain. They're learning. They know how to bump. They know how to protect themselves. And, and they're, they have to, they have to know psychology because they don't have the rest of the ring, but they have a guy who has a good mind teaching them what's what. So these guys learn and they learn good. And I went up and I worked up, worked out with them uh, the one time. And I talk to these guys all the time. 
So like when they're ready, they started work. Uh, their their first ring work was at KSWA. Um, they go and set up the ring so they could so he could work out with them in the ring and put it all together. You know, get everything together that they need. And uh, so we started we started an angle with them a year before they ever get in the ring for us. There are these five guys who come to the ring and act like assholes, or come to the show, sit in the last row and act like assholes, and that's what they're supposed to do. So we get to anniversary show number six, all right? And it's the main event, and it's the heavyweight title match. And I'm like, okay, here's here's the finish of the match. These five guys are going to run in, and they're going to beat the shit out of you. And from that point on, from that day until the next anniversary show, they're going to beat the shit out of everybody. All right. So the anniversary show is the day is a, it's a Sunday night. It's the night before the Nexus angle. End of the match. You know, they're, it's about to be the pin. Boom. They charge. They lay, they lay the two guys out. Guys come out from the back. They lay them out. They tear everything apart. They start, they start destroying the rings. They're half taking the ring down for us so we can get out of there earlier. But you know, strategic yeah <laughs> um all this goes down boom 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 and then the next night we're watching you know see the deal go down on raw and rick messages me he goes uh insurgents angles dead in the water he says no it's not it's how how you figure everyone's gonna think we copied everyone's gonna think we copied but we have proof we were videotaping last night. We have proof. We beat them by 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I don't have advance notice. They're not going to send me a copy. Hey, don't do this because this is what we're going to do. Just happened to be the two nights in a row the same thing happened. Uh, but I ran with those five guys at the top of the card for a year. And they didn't lose. Uh, next year at the anniversary show, the main event is... Uh, a it's survivor series match black diamond versus the insurgents and then we finally win yay us but yeah you know like hey that's that's how it works you get heat by you get heat by killing the heroes Mm -hmm. and then the heroes get their revenge with one win that's all they need if they if they win if the heroes win all the time the fans know they're going to win and they're not going to care as much about that one big win uh so yeah, you know, so that's you know, give these five unknown guys, and it had to be five guys that no one had seen. Like I couldn't, I couldn't pick five guys who were known in other companies and mm-hmm. run with them because it, it just wouldn't have worked. Right, right. Um, let's see who else. Bulk nasty, All right? IWC is doing doing with, and I'm not, I'm not going to tell companies how how they should use their talent. That's their call. Um, we uh. A couple years ago at the anniversary show, I bring Bulk in, have him, you know, up, down, up, down. Has a match with uh, Beastman. Beastman's like our, he's our big guy and he's a guy who goes through everyone. Mm-hmm. Bulk Nasty beats beats Beastman. One of the best big man matches I've ever seen. Like, the crowd was going nuts for it. Okay, well, this is the Bulk Nasty we're going to run with. You know, it's like, it's a di- it, it it's him getting to do something different than what he does at, IWC and you know not saying they're they're not doing it wrong it's just they're doing their thing and we're doing our thing with mm-hmm. them because they, they, they they're using them for those the uninitiated they're using it like he's kind of like the 911 character yeah. right like he's the the big uh uh man not manager the but, bodyguard yeah he's the bodyguard for for Chris LaRusso yeah. and BC Steel and everything so when which I think that's done to a pretty good effect yeah definitely so. yeah they're they're using him well it's just we're giving him, a, we're letting him stretch his legs in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's good, he's, you know, you get that flexibility. So, and I think that's important, uh, of course, just seeing, you know, guys like that getting opportunities. So, uh, from there, I uh, want to kind of close this up here because we've been talking for about 45 minutes. <laughs> but, but it's been great, you know, uh, hearing, hearing about some booking philosophies and everything. Uh, so, first question. Well, first, I think we talked about a little bit on Wrestling Mayhem show, but what are you watching these days that kind of get your attention? Are there any wrestlers that really kind of stick out to you these days or promotions or um, like what, what, what kind of, I, I wish I like, I wish I got to see more. Like I need to, I really need to watch Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. I, cause like I want to see it. Everyone's going to, everyone I know who sees it says you're going to love it. Mm-hmm. Um, have you dived into it? A, not at, at all. all much? Not so. at all. I have not seen any of it. Oh, man. And like, but, there's talent there that I really, really, really like. Oh yeah, there's there's a lot that, that we've seen in the yeah. area, you know. Um, 
I watch, I, I like, I watch, I try and watch Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love NXT. Um, I wish I had the New Japan Network, but I can't get it for PlayStation. So I'd have to watch it on my computer and I'd rather watch it on my big screen. Let me talk to you after the show. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I wish I could see more stuff like PWG. I wish I could see more Chikara. Um, I wish I could see more out of, you know, out of the Philadelphia area. Um, cause there's so much good wrestling out there mm-hmm. and uh, legit. I, I could watch wrestling 24 hours a day. Um, talent wise, um, Jackson Stone, uh, the Shogun Suplex, the Mega Wrestling, Me- MCW Mega Champion, the Heavyweight Champion. This guy is the fucking truth. Uh, I saw him for the first time at Colossal Con, and I was impressed. Like this guy was it? Was it? Was that the anime thing you were talking yeah, about? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't doing it. He he was being himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but legit, this guy's the fucking truth. Uh, that guy's going to go somewhere. Uh, Matt Connard, as soon as eyes get, as soon as someone puts eyes on him, Matt Connard is going to go somewhere. Um, let's see. Jo- uh, Jocelyn Navarro out of MCW. Uh, really, really talented. Uh, she's been working, I think, just over a year. Um, uh, had her in for Black Diamond a few times. She's really, really good. Um, the Philly, Mar- Philly Marino experience, uh, Philly Collins and Marino Teneglia out of M- uh, no, two more guys out of MCW. One of the most entertaining tag teams I've seen, the Koger brothers. Oh, Ch- right. It, yeah. <laughs> the best, the best gimmick in wrestling, the Koger brothers. And they're kind of a, um, uh, kind of a chainsaw massacre family kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, just a darker Wyatt. Yeah. Uh, they, they, in my opinion, they need some fine tuning on what they're doing in oh, the absolutely. ring. Absolutely, but gimmick wise, man, that thing mm-hmm. is presence. Yes, is the biggest thing. Yeah, um, yeah, we would. Uh, a few of us have been discussing them at length. Yeah, in they they're they're legit. They yeah. are they are really entertaining. Uh, Silas Morgan, who used to be Silas Coger, mm-hmm. uh, check him out. That kid's really talented. He, I think he's going to do some do some good stuff. Uh, Remy Levey. Um, Remy's definitely up on his confidence in the last. Yeah, year, I he he had a the best match. He he had a match at that uh, Colossal Con, mm-hmm. and it was the best match I've ever seen him have. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, another guy's been doing different stuff in different places. Um, that yeah, I'm hearing just wildly different characters that he's working with, especially up in Cleveland, uh, working with Gory doing that thing. Yeah. So Gory, <laughs> the, Jason Gory, the best professional wrestler I have ever seen. I saw Ric Flair in his prime. Jason Gorey, the best professional wrestler I have ever seen. Um, let's see who else? The new class out of IWC. Those kids are all going to go far. They are all fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katie mm-hmm. Arquette, uh, Calvin Kotor. Best proving ground I've seen yet. Yeah, because there's always. Oh, I always say the proving ground is like kind of the uh, next class show. Yeah, and usually there's like a dud. You know, yeah. like, like, eh, that went weird. Eh, I don't know about that. But that was the first, like, truly solid proving ground that yeah, I think that, I have th- seen. This whole class, uh, yeah. Jinx, uh, Daniel Hooven, uh, Dan Richards, uh, mm-hmm. Jamie Jameson, that kid's going to be a champion somewhere. They are all so talented. Uh, again, they need their rook- rookie year. They're working on fine tuning stuff. Mm-hmm. Jinx has already done Ring of Honor. Yeah. You know, how many people can it, say that in their fourth month? It was a squash match, but Doesn't it was like, matter. what if she had uh, Kelly Klein? Yeah. Which is, you know. The, 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 the gatekeeper. Yeah. That's not a bad match to have. No. If you get good, if you get a good report on that, you're coming back. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Who else? Anyone else? Like, I mean, I, I always try and check out like new young talent because that's the future mm-hmm. and we want the business to do, to do well and we want it to do good now. But you also want it to still be around in the future if you enjoy it. Absolutely. That's great. What's the best and worst thing about booking wrestling? The best is um, culmination of a, mat, of, of, of a series of, you know, the blow off. When 
when the crowd reacts the way you hope they will when you start writing it. Uh, that's, you know, like there are, I've had, I've had, there have been nights where we've had stuff happen, like go down on a show and it's been so good that it brings a tear to your eye. Like you literally start crying as a how good something went. The worst is having to tell someone, I'm sorry, I don't have room for you on the show. I know you're talented, but I can't stretch the show. I can't put 12 matches on. I can't put nine matches on. I need to keep it at six to seven because I don't want to kill the crowd and kill the town. And I will work you in as soon as I can. But I, I hate, I hate having to tell people that, but it's a necessity. Absolutely. There's a lot of management happening. A lot of time management, a lot of personality management, uh, from what I understand. So it's, uh, it's a tough job. Um, well, on that point, where can people find out about you online and uh, find out about Black Diamond Wrestling? You uh-huh. got any, there's a lot of YouTube online. Yeah. For it. And if you if you search YouTube Black Diamond Wrestling, you'll you'll find some of our stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple I, w- I wish I knew all of them, like cuz like there are other people who have uploaded our stuff. Um and I'm I'm not gonna bitch and complain. That's ours. You can't show it. No, no, no. Put it up there and then tell people it's there and make people watch. And so they, we've had a match on uh, world famous uh, flea market. No, no. You you don't know what flea market? Is? Um, okay. I have I've been a cord cutter for like eight years. So. Well, okay. Uh, is, it, is it a show or it's a it's an internet show? Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's uh, where they shit on wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> they shit on what might not be great wrestling. Okay. And okay. Okay. Now, now I'm coming around on okay. this. Okay. And it was uh, Chess Flexer versus Keith Hot. I heard about this. Yeah. I did hear about Dusty this. Adonis versus uh, versus uh, the Sheep. It's a it's a <laughs> it's a fine match. It's a fun match. Uh, but it's so ridiculous. Like he comes out in that sheep suit. I know. And, and, I remember the first time he did in, in like IWC, and there's like pieces falling off everywhere of in the match. Like it's yeah. gonna be the worst to clean up after. Yeah. So I mean, except for I'm sure he's used glitter at some point. Um, but but yeah, yeah. Th- that's amazing. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, you can follow me at let's see. Obviously, Hamsu Jen, correctly spelled. Yes, we got this show. Um, at uh, on Twitter, uh, you know, Facebook, Jake Garrett, just like it's spelled. Um, Black Diamond Universe on Facebook is also us. Uh, there's another Black Diamond that's us, but I don't know the name of it. Um, like a fan page or something like that. All right. Um, obviously any Black Diamond show, uh, seven, two in Fallen's B seven, seven and seven, eight in McMechan and, uh, one o'clock, uh, seven 15 uh, July 15th at the Not Lego Museum in Bel Air, Ohio. <laughs> I love that every time we get to that. Uh, and of course, and you know, whenever. Stomp, uh, Stomp Out Cancer, July uh, 15th at uh, the Stronghold in Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Of course, keep tabs on that website if you're catching the interview later. Uh, after those shows may have happened, uh, you know, you guys run pretty regularly. So, Well, we try to. Well, uh, rough spot right now. We're having pro build, wrestling building, regular, building pro, issues. Pro wrestling regularly. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, Jake, it's always it's always awesome to have you on. You've been on the Wrestling Man Show a couple times. I just love having a conversation with you about, you know, getting your head around your thoughts on wrestling. Uh, so, and also great at the show's ch- chatting with you, too. Yeah. So, it, uh, It's been a blast being here. It's, right. it's really fun. Like, I can sit and talk wrestling for First hours. First time hours in hours. studio. Yes. So... I had to get you in here since we kind of expanded the studio a little bit. I got a place to put you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Check them out. And like I say, I'm looking for them in the back of your local indie shows in the uh, uh, Pittsburgh, greater Pittsburgh area, I guess, and, and Wheeling as well. So uh, uh, check out everything again. Indie Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe all the places. And please, until next time, support indie wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.